Thank you, family friends, for joining me at What Else? Maria loves to talk. How are you guys are doing? How are you guys and gals doing? Happy New Year. That's right, you guys. We are in 2024. I can't believe it. It seemed like it seemed like it was just yesterday. It was 2023. Now we're in 2024. That's right. I still have my Christmas decorations out. They will be out until maybe next week, and I will replace them getting ready for Valentine's Day. And I still have my Christmas decorations on the door, outside, in the yard, and also on the car. You guys, it's already been a lot of stuff happening. Just, just a lot already. 2024, and well, we got taxes coming up trying to pay off those little Christmas toys and gifts we bought. Some of us bought, some of us, we just give cash or give cards. Really wasn't able to do that much. Talking about that, how was your Christmas? Did you enjoy? Did you have fun with your kids, with your grandkids, nieces and nephews? Did you help make someone else Christmas beautiful and happy, memorable? Did you share? Did you travel? Did you get stuck out in the snow and that bad weather out there? You guys, uh, I'm just glad to be here. I just thank, I know for the ones who are believers, I thank the man upstairs for giving me another day, another year. Thank you uh, to the Holy Father. What is this video about, you guys? I am talking about, I don't know if I should put them all on the same, same video, but I will squeeze them in. This, what I'm gonna do the first part I will do two videos per, two videos. I'm not going to try it because I know you guys, I know you do not like those long videos. And I have so many stories to tell you guys. So what this video is about, all jokes aside, I'm talking about the young lady in Fort Worth who unfortunately had to, uh, you know, we in Texas, she, she, she had to take out, she had to take out her protection she had to get her Saturday night special out for a robber. Someone was trying to break in her home. Um, her man's not at home. Grandpa's not at home. Big brother's not at home. It's a, a poor little young mom and her little babies, the little baby cubs, you know. Second story kind of hits close to home. I do not know these people personally. But I do have a family member, and I was trying to call them. They're not picking up. I guess they know I'm trying to call to get the 411. Y'all know that little hot mess, the little uh, thing that happened down there in Opelousas, Louisiana. One of our uh, several family members still live there. Uh, both my family parents uh, live, came from there. Then we have a lot of family in Lafayette. Yeah, just like, you know, everywhere, Eunice, Jennings, Brobridge, you know, Carrie and Cole. <laughs> you guys, let me stop. Y'all know, the handsome sheriff, police chief, newly elected police chief, and his wife both got shot by his lady love or his I don't know. So we will, we will be talking about both of these. So, hey, if this is not something you're interested in, you don't want to know. You don't want to know my 25 cents, my two cents, whatever. You can make your own video. It's free. It's fun. It's exciting. It's great for the morale. You know, gives you something to do. Keeps you out of trouble. Keep you from spending all that money, okay? Or you can just go and watch the trillion videos that's already on YouTube. And enjoy. So without further ado, y'all know the drill. Go get you some snacks. I don't know. Turkey, ham, laced potato chips, nachos, tamales, Frito pie. Uh, if you're like me, I got some pecan probably. I got some peanut brittle. We got two big old things, uh, bluebell ice cream, some other ice cream. Just a whole bunch of stuff I have no business having, you guys. So, hey, let's go ahead and get into this video. <laughs> the police chief that we are talking about today, uh, police chief Craig LeBlanc. That's a good, strong, Creole, Louisiana, Frenchman name, 
can be a good Cajun name as well. His name is Mr. Craig, not Craig with a C, but with a G. Greg, looks like it's Greg LeBlanc. What problem with this story and um, with most of these cop stories, because it reminds, it doesn't it remind us of the, the chick down there in Laverne, Tennessee? What was her little name? Megan, Megan Hall. It, the story hit. About this time last year, in fact, the 1st of January, we heard about Megan Hall. She was messing with, what was it, five or six cops, young white female. It was maybe one or two of the cops were white and all of the others were black and one Hispanic guy she was essing around with, basically. Y'all know the word, you know, there's a a tool, you know, that you use. So, but yeah, that's what she was doing. And I just saw when I was getting ready to do this story that she uh, came back a few, which I knew she was going to do it. She came back a few months, I think it was around March, saying that the people had groomed her. She was groomed. They had groomed her to, uh, to do these, I don't know what you would call orgies or whatever, the divine activity they had pray not pray but prayed on her and then i saw somewhere in belgium this just happened this just came out in november or december uh at the um luton luton Atlantan prison where 10 correction officers not correction officers guards were involved in again escapades or should we say sescapades 10 of them got in trouble that they were doing all kinds of stuff i don't know if they've been fired or whatnot but a lot of uh things go on in these uh correction office uh prisons uh police house sheriff departments and now you got to kind of like look at the cop differently. Like, you know, is this a good cop? Is this a clean cop? Is he x-raying me with his eyes when he's looking at me? You know, uh, can he be trusted? I mean, it's just so much, you guys. It's like, it, do they all cheat on their wives? Are they all having affairs? Are they all, let's just keep it real. Are they all screwing on their wives? So let's get to this. This is from um, my other favorite uh, website to go to besides Daily Mail, New York Post. So here it says, love triangle dispute. Police chief public publicly admits infidelity. I don't know if this man can be fired or the, I guess it depend on the people in the community in St. Landry Parish in Opelousas if they want this man to stay there. Yeah, he's good looking, fine and sexy and all that, yada, yada, yada. But hey, for me, that ain't good enough. So let's read. Let's see what they're talking about here. A Louisiana police chief admitted he cheated on his wife in an open letter to the public after they were both shocked and wounded by his subordinate who was embroiled in their love triangle. Opelousas police chief Craig with a G LeBlanc and his wife Crystal LeBlanc. Now a little tidbit on them. He's 44. Maybe he's 45 now because what I had read when he got in office last year in November, he was 44. He's been there since 1994. He worked for some 20 years as a detective. His wife, they got married in 2004. So 2004, they've been together a while. And he's been a policeman or a detective. He's been on the force for 20 something years if he's been there since 94. I mean, has he been doing this kind of stuff all this time? Well, he married his wife in 2004. And his wife is a tr that's what gives me with these men that cheat and do all these old hoish things. They be having good looking, pretty wives, nice, attractive wives, and they just they still just not happy. They're still not satisfied. Okay, so here they say, um, Opelousas police uh, chief, uh, a deb was having a affair with a deputy, uh, was shot outside the home, the woman named Officer Savannah Butler, 
on December the 22nd, according to the sheriff's office. Police said Crystal LeBlanc arrived at Butler's house, that's his wife, to confront her husband, who was inside the officer's home before an argument ensued between the couple. Butler, armed with a gun, appeared in the doorway moments later and fired a single shot into the police chief's hand when he attempted to grab the gun. The bullet penetrated through LeBlanc's hand and struck Crystal, the wife, in the arm, according to police. Why somebody said he got shot in the butt? And I'm looking at this lady and I'm not passing shade. She's not attractive. Yeah, I went there. She's homely. Now, she's not coming off as masculine like some of these female cops. You know how they be masculine? They got that, you know, like that, you know, he-man, butch, Triple H mentality built like, like that woman that worked with Triple H back in the day, China. She don't give me those vibes, but she's homely and she... <sighs> She not pretty like his wife. She's not attractive. I don't even see them. If I was, saw, was to see them out and about at an event or at a barbecue or at the club. Hey, why am I saying a club? I haven't been to a club in 20 years, you guys. They do not look like a couple. I guess, hey, let's keep it real. The police chief is not making enough money. He had to go over to her house. It's a few days before Christmas to get his Christmas money, you guys. He needed to get some money so he can go out and buy his kids some Christmas toys. He was short. He didn't have enough money, so he had to get it from his little side piece. His little plain homely, homely Jane. Um, uh, she looked like that woman from Gone with the Wind. Remember the woman... Um, Butterfly or Butter McQueen. Y'all know who I'm talking about. The one that had that little funny face. <laughs> I should be the last one talking about a voice. She had that real kind of strange voice. She looks like that woman and she also looked like, um, I don't know. I mean, just comparing to his wife, it's just weird to me what men will do. Problem with crime among the younger male adults. Oh, uh, and it starts off as juveniles. So there's a program that I would like to bring to Opelousas and it's called, um, it's to give the, the, the kids a, a healthier future. Uh, it's, it's, it's a grant funded program and it targets ages nine to 11 mainly. And it, it gives them mental, uh, mental health evaluations that help them to become better thinkers. Um, when, when kids get angry, sometimes they don't know how to think through the anger, which causes them to start committing crimes. Um, but this program will allow the police department, along with other outside entities, such as um, mental happening in Opelousas, I think the people of see a, uh, a, a more uh, assertive, a more mature, and a more responsive police department, which is what I want to bring to the Opelousas Police Department. And I think the, the number one, the number one focus that the next chief have to be have to have is training the officers up to be able to deal with the crimes that they're dealing with at this time. I am an advanced uh, gang investigator, so I understand the culture and I understand what's going on in Opelousas right now. I've studied the, the gangs and the transitions that the gangs have made up until now, so I think that that'll give me a, a better... Right off the top, we first told you about this story on KDN.com today. The Opelousas police chief admitting to having an affair and apologizing to the people he elected to serve. If you recall, Chief Greg LeBlanc and his wife Crystal were shot three days before Christmas. In his letter, LeBlanc also acknowledges he was unfaithful to his wife, who is a captain with the St. Landry Parish Sheriff's Office. LeBlanc says, quote, infidelity is a breach of not only the personal commitment I've made, but also the professional standards we all expect from those in public service. He also says he understands the importance of 
of regaining the trust of the public. The woman accused of shooting the LeBlanc, Savannah Butler, we'll see her in a moment. There she is on your screen on the left, turned herself into investigators on New Year's Day. The couple suffered non-life-threatening injuries three days before Christmas. Sheriff Bobby Guidros calls the shooting a domestic dispute. Butler bounded out of jail by posting a $22,000 bail. I don't know if his wife is going to take him back. She going to keep him. Wife is real pretty. They got two little kids. They got a little boy and a little girl. Crystal LeBlanc, the wife, a 20-year police veteran, was issued a summons for trespassing onto Butler's property. Craig LeBlanc was also placed on administrative leave pending the investigation. The Opelousas police chief currently faces no pending charges. Now, I was reading somewhere that they can't do anything to a policeman or a police when they are cheating or committing infidelity. There's no such thing that they can, you know, fire them, which that kind of sounds dumb because the girl, that Megan Hall chick, she got fired and five or six other men got fired. So I don't know, you know, what was the difference. It's all the same thing. So here they said the city of Opelousas is located 25, 24 miles north of Lafayette and has a population of 15,835 in 2020, according to the census. After rising to the rank of Detective Sergeant Greg LeBlanc was elected to Opelousas Police Chief in November 2022 and took office January 2023. The couple has been married since April 2004 and shared two children. And then he goes on. You know how these, you know how these dudes do. After they mess up to their wife, to their girlfriend, what they do, they have the apologies. They get on their knees. They cry and they're falling out. Depending on what kind of money they have, they might get her a big old new diamond ring, new wedding set. They might renew the vows. They might buy her a Cadillac. You know, depend. You know. So here he says. I want to express my sincere apologies to my wife, my family, all parties involved, and, and each and every member of our community. The Opelousas police chief wrote in his statement. So like I said, I thought I saw it somewhere. He had tried several times to um, run for police chief and kept losing to this person, that person. In fact, they've done had three or four police, different police chiefs in the last four years. They haven't had the same police chief in the last three or four years. It's been a new person. So that, hey, that tells you something. You need to apply. You deserve to be the next police chief because you, I'm not going to say who the person is, you are a person, man, woman of God, man, woman of God, been married to the same person 20 years, no incidents, no trouble, pillar of the community. Our family name, pillar of the community. <laughs> you guys, I'm being messy, you guys. Got to keep it real. Um, you know, I share with you, my aunt and uncle, they work for um, CBS for like over 20 years. Um, my uncles travel all over the world. He, um, well, yeah, I won't say all over the world, but yeah. So, um, got cousins working in Lafayette for the police department as well. Been with the same person, like I said, for over 20 years. They're hunters, they're fishermen. Upset because I can remember as a child going over there to visit, being with family members here. At that time when we would go, um, there, there wasn't no black cops. There wasn't no black police chief. So a lot has changed since back in the day okay these people that have y'all that have these positions you black cops and we're talking to the black houses and whatnot you didn't just get these jobs people fought died for you to get these positions and this is the kind of freaking stuff that y'all doing not to mention you know sometimes the black cop can be worse worse than the white cop when he's pulling people of color over you know, they seeing things, they're privy to information, they don't do anything, they see how these kids are being treated, they see how these women are being roughed up, they don't see anything, and then some of them, they talk to you crazy, like you some kind of, uh, you know, mangy dog. Uh, they don't have any kind of uh, sympathy or empathy, uh, no accountability, no integrity when dealing with the, the public. 
So for this man to do this type of thing, for someone that's been fighting, fighting, applying, applying, running, running to get get on, and this is what you do. You you just got there the beginning, beginning of this year, beginning of last year, January 2023, and you didn't already fumble the bag December 22nd, 2023. Okay, not, not even really quite a full year. He didn't already fumble the bag. I really, I'm just going to keep it real because y'all know that's what I do. I keep it real because I, I I don't play. I would like to see his cases, at least the, the last 10 years, reopened, looked at, reinvestigated. That's right. I said it. That's why I did it. And I mean it. You did not just cheat on your wife, sir. You cheated on the public, the people that put you in there, the taxpayers, our tax dollars. You're cheating on our ancestors. You're doing our ancestors dirty, dirty who helped you to get where you're at. People are saying, there you light skin. You know what these women do? You know what these dark complexed do when they see a light skin dude? You know what they do when they see yellow? When they see, you know, a dude looks like he could be Mariah Carey's brother. Jennifer Beals' brother, Seller Richardson brother, Kelsey's brother, Meghan Markle's brother. You, you, you know how people are. They see that, you know, I can see how Oprah been with Stephen 30 years, still no marriage, no ring, no kids. They see that, that light skin, tall, 6'2", whatever, cutie, cutie pie. They, you know, I remember one of my uncles, my uncles did not play. I mean, we need, we really need men like my uncles. Uh, these kids, like the previous story I did earlier about Aaliyah Wallace, the young lady in Fort Worth that uh, unfortunately deleted a young child, 14-year-old boy that was trying to break into her child's bedroom. We need these men of uh, my father's day, his uncle's day, my current uncle. We need these these men, but we don't have these men today. They're kind of like the last of the Mohicans, basically. Um, these people here today, no integrity. You know, the wife send the husband off to go to work. He doing everything and, and, and anything. You know, they you, you send uh, the, the son off to go to school, he doing everything and anything. And you got people who see this, look at it, and they don't do anything. So getting back to my uncle way back in the day, and he was, I would say he would, he would kind of color stroke. He was a little color stroke, not that much, but a little. And so I remember my dad said, well, he, and my uncle was a, not my, on my mother's side, but on my father's side, he was a builder, home builder. He built homes, his other brother uh, or cousin, was a plumber. So they worked together building homes and stuff. And he had property. He had homes. He had horses. You know, he was a real macho, real man, man type of dude. So he said, I'm so tired. I can't tell like my uncle because I'm prim and proper. My uncle had a real strong crunchy, fr cr Frenchy Creole accent. In fact, my father's mom barely spoke English. They spoke just Creole French. So he would say things like, I can't have these dudes Coming here to Texas, getting ruined, ruined by these black women, these black women, these, these black, they won't let these men work. They take care of these men. They feed these men. They bathe these men. They give these men their cars. They buy these men cars. I can't get my, my, I can't get them to work. They won't come out in the sun and work with me building homes. They won't do this. These women won't let them do. Y'all know. And I and I and I've been raised also in the Hispanic communities. Lived in a community that was predominantly Hispanic. We was only blacks on one street, the father street, two streets down, only another black couple, black family. I I, I know from even my friends would say, Oh, my mama said she won't let me marry a black Mexican. I would look at mother friend. What is she talking about? I didn't know there were black Mexicans. What did she said? She said, Don't pay her in mind. And another one would say, Yeah, she meant that if he's dark, and then she would point to my other friend who was almost as dark as me. But I knew, I told her, I know that you, y'all have to be pure Indians because she was very indigenous looking. And she said, yeah, that's what they mean because I'm considered dark. Not me, she's talking about herself. So that's what the other friend was saying. My mama won't let me marry a black Mexican. So that's what my uncle was saying. 
my cousins would come out and these women was falling because they they wasn't used to seeing Creole Frenchy uh, Louisiana men or that's what they want these Creole Frenchy uh, you know highlight bright yellow whatever you call them um, uh, Howard uh, Terrence Howard type of dudes lighter than that they wanted to take care of these men they didn't want these men to be out they were talking about that I saw a woman the other day yesterday day for yesterday at Walmart older older black lady in my complexion, maybe a little tad darker than me, with a tall, light, more like a red guy, like a method man. He looked kind of like method man, but was a little lighter. And I just assumed he was her son. I really did. He looked like to be late 20s, early 30s. And so when they passed by me, she kept, baby this, baby that, baby. I'm thinking, oh, okay, this is her dude. This is her man. And she was just, I mean, Throughout the store, the little after my song, she was just baby, baby, and baby, him. and I thought about, I thought about my uncle, and I'm gonna name my uncle and give our blessings to that man because we need men like this man, Uncle Lorenzo. Uncle Lorenzo, a man was a real man. They don't make him like that. Bill Holmes was a man work with his hands, and he see these little these little knuckleheads out here running around. He was straight on them out like that. But this man, Mr. LeBlanc, I'm not saying this because my cousin uh, could take your job, should take your job. Uh, you're not qualified. You are stuck in the flesh. You could have deleted your wife or had this woman to accidentally delete it, the wife. I personally think the wife was really dumb because that's what a lot of people saying online to go out there. I think you know, hon, I think you know, Miss Crystal, that your husband was messing with Miss Savannah. I also read that they said that he uh, swore Miss Savannah in just a few months ago. So Miss Savannah hadn't been a policeman all that time. He, once he got in last year about this time, he hurried up and, and hired his little his little woman, his little side piece, gave her a job. What kind of hot mess is this? Is this what our ancestors, our forefathers, the, the people from the early 70s, 60s, is this what they was fighting for? Is this what they got beat up in jail for? Is this what some of them got killed for, fighting for you guys to get a job, to get these positions? And this is the kind of type of BS that you're doing, that you're pulling, that's not right. It's not right. All these people, except Miss Crystal, the wife, need to be um, let go. The cases, people that they pull over, people that they been sent to jail, all that need to be reopened and re looked at, reinvestigated. Um, we should have known. They right. We should have known better than the trust. Uh, Metanay idol, handsome looking man. But we should be able to trust a handsome, metanay idol looking movie star man for these type of positions. We shouldn't have to feel like we can't trust him because we got some ugly, funky walrus, um, you know, ones that have them positions. Polar bear, grizzly bear, yeti bear. <laughs> Howdy doody. And they'd be doing the same thing, but yeah. And these women, they always look. If you notice, I'm going to put these chicks' faces. Megan Hall, the white woman that was screwing around with all them black cops in Tennessee. And then this lady here, the Miss Butler, who she went and got her little strap. She going to get her little gun, you know. They all have the same look. Homely, plain, uh... I mean, a dog probably wouldn't even lick them, wouldn't come up to them. You know how dogs like to just lick, wouldn't give them no attention. I don't, I mean, really? I mean, really, man? All the women, I remember somebody had told me years ago. It was one of my cousins was saying she was somewhere in a man said, oh, 
there's some beautiful women down there in Louisiana, especially, I think I forgot what party was saying. He just said, you know, like New Orleans and some of the like Lafayette and all up in there. I don't know about that woman. Uh, I, but hey, cousin, I know you're watching. I, I, you know, I called you today trying to get the 411. You want to pick up your phone because I wanted, I wanted to, I wanted to get some info. He couldn't tell me because you know they probably sworn to secrecy. You know, sworn to secrecy. Uh, but yeah, the, these cops. This gonna be a new year, you guys. 2024. I predicted it last year. I said it's gonna be a lot of cleaning up. A lot of people going to be exposed, including a lot of our preachers and pastors will be exposed in 2024. Y'all don't have really too much to say about this. Um, I, I just wish the next person, the next chief, whoever it is, man or woman, or hey, one of my kin folks, <laughs> uh, do right. If you, if you, 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 Listening to that man upstairs, he's not going to lead you wrong. As long as you got him first, you're not going to be led wrong. You're going to do the right thing. And you're going to do the right thing by the people because this makes no freaking sense. This is the town. I think I share with y'all when I really start getting real serious about doing these um, horror stories, crime stories. This is the town where one of my cousins was found um, attacked, molested in a graveyard. Uh, by that serial killer, uh, that man named Sam, that monster, that that evil demonic monster, Samuel Little. I think they say he was the most prolific mass serial killer or black mass serial killer. And he passed away like in 2020. That was a few years ago before he passed. They showed him and listed all the people. And my cousin was one of the, the, the people. He had just was passing through town, passing through town. I don't know if he knew a woman there and gave her a ride. And, you know, cause when you're in a small town, it's like when, when I did the death five murder, the, the little young, two little young girls, Abby and Libby that was attacked. And now we know who did it. Small towns, everybody know everybody, everybody know everybody's business. So it's just weird that this dude was somebody was just passing through town and nobody knew him. I, in fact, at one time I had heard they was blaming one of my cousins, another cousin, for this cousin's um, demise or death. And kind of find out it was this serial killer just happened to be in town passing through. So again, uh, it's just... A lot goes on in a small town that you wouldn't think would. You only think those things happen in big towns. And now we see a lot of cheating, a lot of screwing around goes on in these little towns as well. And you jokers, you are messing with the taxpayers' dollars when you know you should be out here trying to solve these freaking crimes. Too many freaking guns out here on the road, not to mention the drugs. Drugs have taken over small towns, and these police guys can't keep up with. Well, yeah, ha hey, we see what y'all doing. I just keep telling y'all that man was trying to get that Christmas money. He was short. He, he went into this little old ugly homely woman's house to get the little Christmas doll so he can buy a Christmas gift for them kids and for them chilling and for his little his little pretty wife. Yeah, and you know, you woman, you knew that man was doing what he was doing. And if it wasn't her, it would have been somebody else. And the only reason he probably didn't get what somebody looked like him, a little like one of the little Creole queens, a little like Mariah Carey, one of the little Frenchman women, because he know that that would have been too high maintenance. She would have wanted too much, and, and he wouldn't have been able to, to do all that. Yeah, I went there. Yeah, I did. <laughs> So, hey, you guys, leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Tell me if I hit hit all my, my, my holes, all the aces, where I left off at. And again, you guys, let's keep these people lifted up in prayers. The wife, because that wife, Miss Crystal, could have got deleted. They could have both jumped on her, took her out, took her out to the swamps. Nobody would have known anything. They would have just said she was a... A woman that went out 
whatever, maybe went to Walmart and never came back home. And nobody would have known any anything, you know. Or this woman, Savannah, she could have deleted both of them on the spot. Why would you come out, Savannah? All you needed to do, he was outside talking to his wife. Just keep the door closed and lock and mind your, your business. Why would you, you come out with your little strap? I mean, really, you done mess it up for both of y'all now. Hey, you guys, y'all know the deal. Don't be out there drinking and driving, and don't be out there cheating on your wives. But I already told you guys, my previous boss from when I worked at Sam's, uh, she was, a, she, I think she was in my age group. I think she might be a little older than me. I just saw her a few days ago. Told me her first husband, that he was, well, they both white. She was white. Her first husband was white. Her second husband, Hispanic. That he told her, that when he went to some kind of function, that he was invited by some cops, all them cops had they women, they side piece, they mistresses. None of them had they wives. So we knew way back then when she told me this story about eight years ago. That's what that's what a lot of them do. They that none of them hardly, very few of them, are faithful to their wives. Yeah, I went there. I shouldn't have, but hey, maybe it might be some, you know, but I I, I think really a lot of them not because they got these women throwing themselves on, trying to get out of paying a ticket. And then when you got these cute, sexy, hot cops, you know, look like matinee idols, you know, look like movie stars. You know, the women are really just throwing and, and lusting and thirsting after them. You know, and these men, they so weak. They so, you know, I want to say some other things, but I want you know, I need you. I need y'all support. I need you guys support. So please click like and subscribe. Share my video. Leave me those comments. And hey, if you too, too, whatever, what you know, rowdy, I will delete and block you. <laughs> yes, you guys. But hey, let's lift these people up in prayers. Couples in general. Young, old, married couples, police officers, the couples. Doctor couples, couples working at Walmart, couples working at Amazon. These couples today in 2024, they need plenty of prayers and support from family and friends. And let's give them that love, support, and, and send out the light to them. Because it's really easy if you're not a strong person to mess up and, and go the wrong way. So again, you know, I love you. Thank you. I wish y'all the best. I wish all y'all dreams. Uh, resolutions and goals come true you that it happens for you thank you